Uh, just to uh, start introducing you, um, I'm very excited to have you on the Internet of Census podcast today because you're such a trailblazer and pioneer in this field. You say that rather than being within the scent industry, you position yourself in scent culture. Can you explain the difference uh, and at the same time explain some of the work you've done within the field of smell and smell curation? Sure, I, I feel that scent culture is somewhat broader than scent industry. Uh, although I, do, I did do my PhD with the industry, with a, I don't know if I can mention their name. Yes, because they're in my PhD, IFF. I worked a lot with IFF in reconstructing smells and using their data, um, organizing uh, smell tours with them. But when it comes to scent culture, I think it's broader. It's also about heritage. Um, it's about communities. Um, it's about scholarship. It's about well-being. It's about um, inclusion. So in the in the broadest sense. And your other question was what uh, was what have you done with smells? Yeah, it's some examples of of work you've done with smell and smell curation. I know there are many. <laughs> There's some sirens here in Amsterdam. I hope you didn't hear them, <laughs> uh, but they're almost gone. Uh, yes, I, I started um, working with smells um, in 2010. I did my first smell uh, event, uh, and that was at the Stedelijk Museum Amsterdam. It was called Do It, Smell It. So it was very much focused on don't just talk, don't just listen, but actually do something, start smelling. And that's the first time we invited an aroma jockey to actually illustrate all the lectures. The amazing art historian Jim Dropnik was there. He, he's the first olfactory art historian. And all his examples were, well, aromatized uh, by this aroma jockey. Um, and other things I did was guided tours with smells for children, for grown-ups, so they can better understand what they see in paintings or historical events. Um, I did many guided tours with blind and blind people and people of low vision, so that they can actually have access to stories, to people, to objects through the sense of smell. I think that best sums up what I do with smell. I use it as a medium to get people to talk. Yeah. And uh, can you explain what an aroma jockey is? For fun? Yes. Yeah. Uh, the abbreviation of aroma jockey is AJ. So just like a DJ or a VJ, uh, they usually work at parties. So they diffuse aromas to increase the atmosphere, just like a VJ would um, project images. And a DJ, of course, plays music. Mm -hmm. And the aroma jockey really collaborates with the VJ and the DJ in creating what you could call a total work of art. So it all comes together. Um, mostly pleasant smells, I would say. A classical, traditional aroma jockey. So during lectures they i invite them to also diffuse maybe a bit less common less pleasant smells some yeah. historical odors yeah and it's always a really amazing experience to see the aroma jockey at work i've had the pleasure of um of seeing that happen and smelling that happen <laughs> yeah and it looks indeed it looks amazing because there are clouds mm -hmm. of fragrant smoke it's so synesthetic you can actually see the smells diffusing yeah. uh, in space. Yeah.